Hello guys, I'm Dr. Sonali Jagadi, Senior Resident of Zingaini, having secured an All India rank of 3546 in NEET PG 2021. So today, let's learn about a very important concept of asyncretism. So before going into the depth, first let me just tell you what is engagement. So in the process of labor, we know the very important step is the engagement. Engagement of the head means when the biparietal diameter crosses the pelvic inlet that is it is uh, considered at the level of the ischial spines. So when the biparietal diameter crosses the ischial spines, the head is said to be engaged. But in nature, in reality, the head does not follow this rule. The fetal head, that is the sagittal uh, suture, uh, tends to deflect sometimes anteriorly or sometimes posteriorly and this deflection uh, anterior or posterior is known as the asyncretism. Let me just diagrammatically explain this to you. So if this is the pubic symphysis, this is the sacrum. Okay. So this is the pelvis that we are uh, seeing in, in a patient who is lying in a lithotomy position. So ideally when the head is coming, these are the ischial spines, okay. So this is the sagittal suture of the fetus. So ideally this should lie in the center corresponding at the level of ischial spines to call it as engaged head. But in reality what happens? The head tends to deflect or the sagittal suture tends to deflect sometimes more anteriorly that is the pubic symphysis. This is the pubic symphysis. This is the sacrum. Okay. Tends to uh, deviate anteriorly more or sometimes it can even deviate posteriorly. These are the same ischial spines, but here the sagittal suture is reflecting more posteriorly, that is towards the sacrum. This mechanism is called as asyncretism. Okay. Now, these have been given some special name of which a uh, lot of MCQs are uh, frequently asked as far as NEET PG or maybe sometimes even in INSAT and it's very important for the postgraduates to know because it's an important viva question. So when the sagittal suture lies anteriorly, that means in this case, suppose the sagittal suture deflects more anteriorly, that is towards the pubic symphysis, the posterior parietal bone becomes more prominent. Okay. So this is known as the posterior asyncretism or posterior parietal presentation. This phenomena has been also given a special name called as the Lisman obliquity. Okay, so this is known as the Lisman obliquity. This is also known as the posterior parietal presentation. or posterior asyncletism, right? Next scenario is when the sagittal suture deflects posteriorly. So it is going behind. When it is going behind, it is going towards the sacrum. So here the anterior part of the parietal bone, okay, the anterior parietal bone becomes more prominent. So that's why it's known as the anterior asyncletism. Remember the anterior or the posterior is defined or named according to the part of the parietal bone which is more prominent. Okay. So this is known as the anterior asyncletism. Okay. Also known as the anterior parietal presentation. has also been given a special name and is known as the Negley's obliquity. Okay, so this is the 
negligence obliquity or the anterior parietal presentation or the anterior asynchronism. So this let me just show you in a diagrammatic uh, fashion. This uh, picture I have taken from the Datta textbook of obstetrics where you can clearly see that they have demonstrated the same thing. Uh, figure A shows anterior parietal presentation. That means in anterior parietal presentation the uh, sagittal suture is deflecting or posteriorly. So you can see the baby's sagittal suture is deflecting towards the sacrum. Okay, so this is the anterior parietal presentation and this is what is uh, uh, anterior parietal presentation or the uh, Nedley's obliquity. This is the ideal situation in which the sagittal suture should lie uh, in between the uh, ischial spines. That is called as head in synclitism. Next, this is when the sagittal suture is lying more close to the pubic symphysis. Okay, so you can see that the uh, sagittal suture is lying more close to the pubic symphysis. So the posterior parietal bone becomes prominent. So this is called as the posterior parietal presentation or the posterior asynchronism, also known as Lisman's obliquity. So why is this uh, asynchronism happening? Now nature has created this, so there must be some purpose for that. So it is because the engagement of head with asynchronism, the two parietal eminences cross the brim one at a time. Okay. So this helps the lesser diameter, that is the super subparietal, which is 8.5 cm, to cross the pelvic brim instead of the larger biparietal diameter which is 9.5 cm for engagement okay so just remember the uh, diameter that is the super subparietal which is 8.5 cm which is lesser than your biparietal diameter which uh, actually should cross okay this is 9.5 cm okay Right. So this is why asynchronism has been, uh, uh, you know, found in a normal labor. Remember that asynchronism is uh, hence beneficial for the engagement of head, uh, but marked or uh, you can say persistent asynchronism can lead to cephalopelvic disproportion. So that posterior parietal presentation is more commonly seen in. Uh, primary gravita female because they have a good uh, uterine tone okay and also tight abdominal wall whereas the post uh, anterior asynchronism that is the anterior parietal presentation is more commonly seen in the multiparous female okay for further videos i'll try to uh, elaborate on, on different aspects of labor and different uh, things that we see in PV examination. So today I hope you have understood about the asymptotism. Uh, if any doubts, uh, please feel uh, free to write in the comment section. I'll be glad to clarify. Or you can DM me in my telegram handle. Uh, so this is uh, uh, it for today. Have a great day. Guys.